Hello and welcome back to um, Property Data and Tools and this week we are learning how to plot. We're not talking about some political plot, we're talking about the representation uh, of data where we show the relation between variables. It is very important that you think what kind of representation you are looking for first, what do you want to show? Do you want to have a relation? Do you want to show a distribution? Do you want to show uh, outliers or do you want to show the general patterns? And that is defining what kind of plot you are actually going to use. In this, we're going to learn first how to make a couple of bar charts, frequency distributions, um, facet plots and how to combine them. To this end, we're going to use ggplot2 which is a library which allows you to do that. So we start out by activating the individual libraries. You can either see them in your packages on the right side. You check and you see that they are already activated in my case. If they're not, you can either press library for each one of them or just select all. In the case where you haven't installed them, you have to run, so if you don't find them ticked or unticked, then you have to run the installation of the package. Good. So, assuming you have all of your packages loaded, the first thing what we do is we load the data. To this end, again, we look that we have the file which we are looking for in our working directory, which you find on the right side. If that is not the case, you go and change your work directory on the session set work directory choose directory all right so first what we do we act we load the csv file with the property data that is running right now you can always see it here on the right side where they have this little stop sign um, that the computer is doing something and the first thing what we do always is preparing the data data munging what do we actually want to do so we create a new data set for plotting. We never work on the original data set that is going to stay the same because we otherwise lose information. So the first thing what we do, we're only going to look here at sales of units in Melbourne. And what we want to know about it, we want to have the transaction date, the transaction values, areas, bedroom, bathroom, suburbs and postcode. So we run it and we created a secondary data set. It has less variables to ones we decided, as well as less observation because certain rental or houses are excluded. So now we can start. But this is the data set we are working on. This is a subset, so it makes it easier for you to work with. Less data points, more visualization. Generally, ggplot2 is able to create a plot by calling the first function and then behind it first thing it defines the data set you're working with in our case properties plotting then it asks you what you're mapping in the x variable we want to have the bedrooms and in the y variable we want to have transactions action value and how do you want to plot it you want to have it as a point so this is all selected and then we run both and it creates on the bottom right, a plot. If you want to have the details about this, how ggplot is running, there is a, GG, there is a cheat sheet available for you. I will put the link down in the below. So always think about what are you mapping, what's the x and what's the y. Sometimes this is really hard to see. What you see in the plot is that there is a lot of dots to the point where there is no real visualization anymore where many points are and where little points are. We see the outliers very well, but we don't see the big bunch. So maybe we have to make a model and what we're doing is we're creating a smooth uh, model where we are looking for a linear regression which shows us the distribution overall. So we run this and what it shows, the blue line is the where the average is of each one of these points. We can then change this as well into different kind of methods, um, non-parametric or linear methods and plot them as well. Let's see what that brings up. Same thing, 
because we have so many data points. We can also add different colors. So when you look here, we have the points and then we see the theme is classic and the color is by bedrooms. Here, col equals bedrooms. Everything which is within that bracket here is about the aesthetics. It's what you're actually showing. You're aesthetically showing on X the bedrooms, on Y the tra trans value, the transaction value, and as a third variable, you're using the color, which is by bedrooms. You can also change this. Here we go, activated. And what you see is that the colors here are going from dark to bright, from dark blue to bright blue, and it goes from one bedroom to four bedrooms. In many cases, you have the transaction values as a um, scientific number. And that's not really how we like to represent things. If you don't like this, please activate the options siphon number five, which allows you to then change it into normal numbers. I've done that already. Another way of looking at things are facets and facet wraps. So when you have multiple areas and you want to compare each one of them, let's say you want to know this distribution about bedrooms and transaction values for different postcodes or suburbs. So what we are creating here is a facet plot with a facet per suburbs. Let's see how that looks. It runs because it takes a little bit longer. Let's see. What do you see here? It created for all of our data sets a representation for each one of the suburbs. So Carlton is a suburb, Docklands is a suburb, East Melbourne is a suburb, and each one of them has now an individual plot. That allows you to see that, for example, Carlton has a very steep value, while others like North Melbourne are very flat. Careful. I use the scales to be free. You have to really be careful what the numbers actually mean. So when you look at them, you can see that the height of these numbers are different. So here is 1 million in North Melbourne goes up to 3 million, while in Kensington it looks steeper, it goes from 300,000 to only 700,000. So it's much lower in, in, to, in, in absolute values and it's not as steep in relative values. So careful with that. Be very careful with these kind of um, choices. Another way is the histogram. Histogram is great if you want to look at large uh, number of data points. What is the overall distribution? And let's see how they're looking like. You see here, this is just the number of transactions. What you see is a skewed distribution with a peak below around um, half a million and uh, goes up to four million, but there's barely any observations anymore. A histogram is always with bars. The alternative to that is a frequency distribution where you create a line which is going through this. Let's see how that looks in comparison. Here we go. And the problem with this is, if you look at, look at this, is that it looks quite jerky. And that has to do with the number of bins. We take the maximum value and the minimum value and divide it with by 20. If you put that up to, let's say, 80 and create exactly the same plot, you get a much more refined line. Again, this is a choice. Sometimes you want to show the overall pattern. Sometimes you want to have the individual numbers. It's up to you but you have to think about which number suits you best. We can also do that now and separate that for each one of the bedrooms. So are higher numbers of bedrooms really more expensive? Let's see. What you see here is that the one bedroom and the two bedroom and the three bedroom and the four bedroom actually have the mode relatively higher. 
So you see that the, the transaction value, the scale, is only free in one direction, in the y-axis, while the x-axis, the transaction value, is for each one the same. That allows you to compare each one of them disregarding the number of them. So if you look at this, the number of one and two bedrooms is much higher than the numbers of three and four bedrooms. Actually, if you look at them, the four bedroom has barely any observations, so it's really hard to talk about this, but the first two are looking quite good. If you put that all free instead of free y, something happens which is really annoying. Let's see. Because you cannot really compare the individual bedrooms, uh, you, the individual plots you just created. It looks as if the first uh, one bedroom has a higher or more to the right skewed distribution than the two bedroom. But by looking at the values underneath, you can see that that might be not the case. So careful on how you do that. You can also combine them into one single plot. So not separated uh, on your graph, but inside one, just separated by color. What do you see here? That allows you to compare both X and Y values. So you see that the one and the two bedroom are both quite high, um, high number of observations, but the three bedroom is actually not as much, quite low in comparison to four, it's like nothing. And you also can see that the two bedroom properties are actually having a peak, which is, they have more observations, which are more valuable than the three bedrooms. So that's a, quite an interesting thing. And again, the choice of bins are up to you. Like if I do the exactly same frequency plot with a more refined number of observations, it gets even more extreme and you see that the two bedroom are the most observed one. Going back in to the normal first uh, representation, we have something called a box plot. Box plot allows you to look at the distribution as well. So a box plot shows you the top 25, middle 25 and bottom 25 range of your data distribution. Let's see how that looks. What you see here is the first and foremost is, uh, is the middle line. This is the mean. The black line shows you the mean. The box above is the 50 to 25 percent range and the bottom is your 25 to 50 percent range. So everything within that box represents 50 percent of your observation. If in that case look the first for the one bedroom apartments that is actually quite narrow. There's not many not much variance, while the four bedrooms have a large variance. Again, careful, that has probably to do with the number of observations. There's a lot more observations which only have one bedroom versus four bedrooms. Outliers, this is one way of actually representing outliers. The viscous here are showing one and a half times your interquartile range. Everything beyond that is questionable. Careful, an outlier is not an error. You cannot just exclude them. Maybe that's an actual observation. Maybe somebody actually paid that much. That can be. A classic way of looking at things is the scatter plot. Scatter plots are to represent two-dimensionally uh, the relationship between two parameters. To this end, we're going to load a crime data set. So we see that there's parameters like year, postcode, suburb, offensives, what kind of offenses do you have? Again, we prepare the data, we filter it for a certain area, and we only want to know about burglary and break-ins. 
Why? Well, we assume that burglary and break-ins are more relevant for properties than um, personal crime where people are getting hurt. So, let's create that. We created a new data set, so it's, which is called Crime Stats 2013. What we do now is we are creating another properties plotting where we're looking at the sale of units. And what we want to have is the postcodes and the median for each one of them. Because now we are connecting the two data sets. We're connecting, merging properties plotting with Crime Stats 2013. By in properties plotting, we have an attribute which is called postcode, which is with a capital C. And in crime stats, we have something which is called postcode, which has a capital P. Because they're not the same way spelled, we have to do it by X, a value, postcode, with a capital C, and by Y, postcode, with a capital P. And even if it's not matched perfectly, we accept that. That's fine. So let's merge them. Et voila. So properties with crime stats has now everything combined. Let's look at this. What we see, the data frame properties with crime stats has a postcode, median price, and number of offenses. So the question is now, are we having a correlation or are these two parameters number of offenses and median house price a relationship with each other we can plot that just to look at the relationship between those two parameters what we see is that there is something careful again the number of offenses and median house price are quite noisy we can see that there is an overall trend. The number of offenses goes up, the prices are going down, but there are outliers and quite a lot of it. So careful with that. Now, the thing is we want to have a proper output of this, not just looking at this and no screenshots. We want to save this as a PDF. We can do that by GG Save, file name, unit prices against crime stats, plot, and so on. We want to have it as a PDF, and these numbers here are in inches. So width and height are in inches, and we can define how good the resolution is. 300 DPI is quite high. A printer normally does 220. Laser printers are higher, bubble sheets are lower. Don't worry about that. It's about 300 is about okay. And so this is how you get it out onto a normal thing. Let's look at this. We execute that command. And in your files, you see now the GG save unit. We have to, if you don't see it, it has to do that you haven't updated it. It's a very stupid program. It doesn't do some things for you. But you see now it is here. Just gave me a bit of a fright there. Et voilà. What you see is they plotted very nicely and you can see that it's very sharp. Very, very sharp. That's, what you, that's why you want to have a PDF which allows you to then use that in any kind of format on any kind of screen with a very clear representation. Again, down here is the link to the ggplot cheat sheet as well as to a ggplot tutorial. There's lots of them. Use them and we'll see you next week when we're going to go into the details about inferentials. Thanks very much.